Now, I'm no expert, but this looks like BSA section. <laughs> God, no flies on <laughs> you, you see, today. Oh, yeah, no flies on you today. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think if you, if you say to anybody, whether they're motorcyclists or not, mm -hmm. British motorcycles, eventually somebody will say BSA. Yeah, yeah. Um, and with good reason, because in their day, they were by far the biggest brand that we produced. Really? I mean, they also, bigger they, than Triumph? Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In, wow. in their heyday, they were selling 50,000 bikes a year. Yeah, gosh. Triumph were 30,000 bikes a year. Oh, significantly bigger than AMC that. with the HS and Matchless were at 20,000 bikes a year. Yeah, yeah. And Norton, who would be next, probably next on the recollection list of a lot of people, 5,000 bikes wow. a year. Wow, blimey. Uh, BSA had a very big export department, was selling bikes all around the world, of course. Right. Um, but they started out like so many other companies making bicycles. In fact, before that, mm -hmm. the whole thing with BSA, I mean, again, BSA, what does it stand for? Um, Birmingham Small Arms? Yeah, you are... Oh, I'm fired today, Jeff. Yeah, but <laughs> other people will say, bit stuck anywhere. Oh, OK, OK. Fine. Or even, bloody sore arse. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. But uh, yeah, Birmingham Small Arms. So they, they were actually producing armaments and rifles yeah. and things like that. Hence the symbol of the three stack rifles. Yeah. Um, but they were making bicycles and making say, components for other people. This looks like a bike, literally like a bike with an engine strap. It, it is, yeah, it is. Yeah, in yeah, fact, yeah. they didn't make their first motorcycle, complete motorcycle, until 1910. Right. This one is a 1911 three and a half horsepower. Well, so, much? <laughs> my guess, yeah. and this is purely my guess, not the museum's position, yeah, yeah. Um, but my guess is this is the first model that they produced. Yeah, right. This wow. is a little ticket on the back and it's got 1911 oh, okay. written on it. Oh, yes, yeah. Interestingly, you know, for the bikes of the time, we've looked at the belt drives mm -hmm. and everything mm -hmm. else, the belt and the chain are on the same side with this. Yeah. Whereas right. on the other belt drive bikes, they're on opposite sides. But if you look at the belt itself, it's been manufactured to look like a chain. So it has, yeah, with yeah. links like that. And it's incredibly close to the chain sprocket, isn't exactly, it? Well, exactly, exactly, yeah. You can see all sorts of... <laughs> you wouldn't have thought tolerances <laughs> that were that tight, I know, it? unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, so yeah, I mean, it, the very, very first sort of model of BSA that was produced. I guess, I mean, in terms of the models that they made, there mm. are some iconic names that stand out. And, and one of those must be the Bantam. Yep, of course. BSA yep, Bantam. Yep, yep. Uh, I mean, in its lifetime, the BSA Bantam, they made over 400,000 of them wow. through, through various specifications. And um, what we have is, is a D1 Bantam at the back, the green and white one. Yep. And um, interestingly, we've talked a lot while well, we've been going yep. around the museum yep. about the Germans. Yes. <laughs> um, Post-war, there was a German manufacturer, DKW, mm -hmm. that had that very design. And that very design was given to the BSA company as war reparations. Oh, how and that's how the BSA Bantam came into Goodness being. Goodness me, so even in, that wasn't English. It was made by those things that made those troop carrier landing craft things. Exactly. Goodness yeah, yeah. me. So there you go. So the D1 Bantam, and of course that was synonymous painted red with the telegram boys whipping about all over the place before yeah. email. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Uh, I guess a lot of your subscribers won't remember a telegram. Oh, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Let alone myself. had one from the Queen. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know, a lot of people started out in life as telegram boys whizzing about with a message. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You you wanted to send somebody a message in the morning. They got it an hour later with a man who well, saluted right. at your yeah, front door. Great. They look nice and lightweight still, don't they? Well, yes. Yeah, so they they were a little one two five cc at the start, mm -hmm. and um, by the time you got there's a bike up the back there which uh, may or may not be in shot at the moment. A yep. fourteen four. Yeah. Um, and then by then it had got to one seven five cc and a okay. and a four speed gearbox. Right, right. A I started the model before which. For some unknown reason, was a D7, not a right. D13, yeah, okay. but a D7, which had a three-speed gearbox. Yeah, yeah. And wow. a top speed downhill with a wind behind it of about 55 miles an hour. And they're still a pretty looking little bike, aren't they? It's not a bad looking yeah. little yeah, bike. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, should we move up a bit? Actually, so yes. we get some of these others in shot. Uh, was there anything else we need to talk about with these particular? Well, ones while, while we're here, yep. of course, you've got. The BSA Gold Star. I was going to say, is that another Gold Star? It's yeah, lovely, and, um, and again, one. the name crops up yet again. This was Val Page. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, a very, very successful bike. It developed from the Empire Star. Um, the reason that it got its name of Gold Star was if you went to Brooklands and could manage a consistent 100 mile an hour lap at Brooklands, they you gave you a Gold, gold Star. star. <laughs> and that's how the Empire Star oh, became okay. the Gold Star. Right. And um, 350, this one's a, a 1954, I think, 350. 
954, 350. Uh -huh. Then they had a 500cc version. And finally, the twin cylinder 650, the Rocket Gold style. But yeah, these are, Nothing if you can imagine. find a good condition one of these and you can buy it for anything under £17,000, rip the man's well. arm off. Really? Wow. But whatever you do, don't try and ride it. <laughs> that good. For, first gear, he's rather tall. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lovely. Okay. All right, let's move up then. Okay, so this little purple machine here looks very interesting. Looks pretty modern, actually. Well, it's, it's got a modern look about it. It's, it's actually a 1971. Okay. Um, and it's as, it's as rare as the proverbial rocking horse manure. Okay. See, I've learned something. Very good. <laughs> I've learned what manure is. Um, yeah, I, by the, by the, think back to, well, you can't think back to the 60s. I can. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and in the 60s, obviously, the, the Japanese were coming over in strength. Honda yep. were winning at the TT. Uh, and they were doing it with new technologies and smaller and smaller engines. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and so in 1968, the BSA main board went to Edward Turner, who by then had retired, and said, Mr. Turner, because they didn't call him Edward, they yeah. didn't, um, <laughs> Mr. Turner, we need something to, to actually combat this, this uh, Japanese invasion, yeah. something which he'd predicted actually on a fact-finding mission quite a few years before. Yeah. Anyway, this rather upset um, Bert Hopwood and Doug Heal, mm -hmm. who were uh, BSA design at the time, BSA Triumph design at the time, yep. because they'd got a range of product on the drawing board that they were going to take to the main board, okay. but the main board went straight to Turner and oh. got him involved. So 1968. Interesting so Interesting politics around the place it, then? It, yeah, always yeah. politics. Yeah. So what he developed was a 350cc overhead cam, mm -hmm. double overhead cam. Yep. Um, and it came out, it was going to be built, I have to choose my words carefully, it was going to be built as a BSA Fury and as a Triumph Trident. Right. Um, the frame was developed by Rob North, and Rob North was busy with the Triumph racing frames, mm -hmm. and Doug Hill, if you remember, was the, the sort of designer stroke racing guru at Triumph. Yep. Um, what ultimately happened was the bike was made to a price, it's got a conical hub, which is not the best in the world. Mm -hmm. um, the engine didn't really run right. Okay. It used a lot of oil yeah. as well. Uh, and so ultimately, after Turner had finished producing it to the best of his ability, then Hopwood and Heel, no doubt with a gleeful expression on their faces, were called in to try and sort it out. Ah, yes. Which, yeah, yeah. which they duly did. And, um, and they worked hard with it and they managed to get it into a half reasonable motorcycle. Mm -hmm. But then um, the flaky marketing people, mm -hmm. of which I was a flaky marketing <laughs> person within the motorcycle industry, but the flaky marketing people decided, because things were quite dire within the BSA group, that actually they were going to launch it in 1971, even right. though Hopwood and Hill hadn't finished ironing out the bugs. Oh, great. And they were going to launch this as the new kind, under a, the manner a new kind of power. Right, right. Um, now, sadly, it didn't get launched as a production bike in 71, but in 72 they were developing it to go down the production line as a 1973 model. Yep. And, of course, in 1973, BSA Group went bankrupt. Yeah, so that was the end of that. So, one. actually... The bike never got into full production. There were, however, quite a few made, and numbers vary between a handful, being five or six, yeah. and maybe 40 or 50, okay. in both BSA and so in Triumph total, in guys, okay, right, yeah. that were sent out to dealers as demonstrators and you know mm -hmm, stuff like mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm. But um, a guy who, uh, who worked at BSA told me, who was there at the time, that it never got into full production. It was going down the production line as the receivers were called in. Goodness me, it's a real rarity, that yeah, one. Yeah, I mean, uh, to finish off the story as well, I mean, primarily it was being demanded by the US dealers of BSA. Interesting. And what they wanted was full spares backup as well. Mm -hmm. So spares were produced, they were put into contact, well, not into containers in those days, but into boxes and shipped across the water. Yeah. By the time the boats docked, in America, BSA Group had gone under, oh and so the recipients on the on the American end said, "Well, we don't want the parts anymore. Yeah. You better take them back." Oh, right. So when the captain turned around and came back, he worked out that nobody at the other end were going to take them either, yeah. because BSA Group had gone bankrupt. Yeah. 
So they went over the side. So somewhere in the really? middle of the Atlantic Ocean space. is the American space production of the oh, SA right. Furies. So the next thing is to get wow. a diving bell and go and try and find them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What but, a great story. Yeah, but when you, when you look at the bike, I mean, particularly if you, if you look at the, the shape of the cycle parts, mm -hmm. It's very, very reminiscent, particularly of Suzuki's of the year. I was going to say, um, I mean, I, this is around the time where my dad started having motorbikes, yeah. and uh, he had a Yamaha that had the same tank shape as that. Yeah. Uh, unbelievably Japanese looking to my eye. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you can see what they were aiming at, for sure. Well, I had a chum of mine here last week who was at Kawasaki at the same time that I was when riding KH250s, mm -hmm. and he's convinced it's a KH250 side panel. Yeah. It probably yeah, yeah, isn't, yeah. but, you know, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's you see where very much from. in the image of. Great stuff. Yeah. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for that, Jeff. OK, so again, I'm on fire today. This looks like sidecar section, Jeff. <laughs> Something Shh. that you just don't really seem to see these days. I mean, I know they are still manufactured, but very rare. You don't see them on the road much, do you? No, no, you don't. Not anymore. I mean, nowadays, it's, um, it's very much an... Inth there, there are quite a few sidecar clubs yep. and quite a few sidecar enthusiasts. Yep. Um, Back in the 50s and 60s, though, the progression was fairly simple. When, when the war finished and you went off to do your apprenticeship in a factory or something yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. then you walked to work, because generally the factory was the end of the next street. Yeah. Um, then you progressed to a bicycle. And then if you were lucky when you came out your apprenticeship, you bought a motorcycle, yeah. 60 or 70 pounds worth of motorcycle. Then you went courting, then you had children, yeah. then you had a sidecar and you strapped it to your bike. <laughs> and that's stuff. how the families moved around until the dawn of the Mini mm -hmm. and the Triumph Herald and things like that, which brought cars to the, to the yeah, Mises, yeah, effectively. Yeah. But that said, I mean, this, this is a Panther, uh, Panther motorcycle, P&M motorcycle company. Yep. It's, uh, it's got a sloper engine on it, very, very long stroke, so ideal for sidecar work. And were they specifically built because they were going to be used with sidecars? Um, I don't think they were specifically built for that. It, it just, just so happens so that, happens right, that, that right. configuration is the best for sidecar work. Right. But this is a, this is a Watsonian sidecar. And these are the people that are still going, aren't they? Watsonian Squire. Absolutely, yeah. 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 Watsonian Squire are still going. They're made now in the Cotswolds. Uh, yeah. And they're, they're bringing up quite a lot of their old designs, like the Meteor that was mm -hmm. made out of, um, you know, our, our love of aviation, made out of gas fuel tanks from Meteors. Really? Wow. After the war, they, they bought them and they turned them into sidecars. I wonder where they're getting them from these days. <laughs> they're, they're the same shape, but they're yeah, making yeah. them out of fiberglass. Yeah, wow. So, um, yeah, yeah. yeah, so the Watsonian company's doing very well. And if I dare say the, the Brexit word on, a, mm -hmm. on one of these, since that announcement, their order book has gone up tremendously really? because the value of the pounds dropped. Yeah. And so, so of suddenly course, become as an exporter of British wow. goods so and services, yeah. they're doing really, really well. Oh, I was oh, talking great. with Ben at the bike show and, um, yeah, he's, he's more than happy at the moment. Oh, great. Oh, that's, so, that's you know, news. it's, yep, yep. this, this is a single, what they would call a sports sidecar, but of course what you did have was the big double adult. Yeah. So you, well, it called double adult because you could get two, two in it. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> but yeah. generally, it was mother and the kids. Yeah. You know, and a little bit of luggage. I wonder but what impact that had on the performance of the bike when you've got a mother and the kids and a bit of luggage and you're on the bike. Oh, how very dare you. I don't know. It depends on how big your mother was, I yeah, suppose. Yeah, 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 exactly. exactly. <laughs> yeah, well, there's obviously going to be a little bit of a drag. I've never it's ridden an outfit, but it's something that Ben's promised to teach me how to do. It's so. a bit of a, yeah, it's a maybe bit of an art, apparently, isn't it? Maybe that's something we'll have to do together that's at some stage great, in the future. Great, that'd be brilliant. But What's this, the old one down the end of that? That's amazing, like a carriage. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, what we've got down there, Chater Lee was another one of these companies that made bicycle components. Yeah. And there's a very Edwardian feel to that Definitely, isn't it yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. inside the chair actually there's um, there's a deer stalker hat and all that, that sort of thing should we just move down there a bit actually yeah, yeah. well yeah i mean that looks uh, that's like a bloody work of art presumably that's it's hugely restored because it looks as good as new well again. yeah it's um, uh, it, it does give that impression it's a yeah, 19 yeah. it's a 1922 um with a mashing niblick and a spoon <laughs> sticking out the back <laughs> for, for the golfers it's probably not the right clubs but don't worry <laughs> I mean, interestingly, if you went round a right-hand turn, you might have a bit of a problem. Yeah, because their bar's going to hit the... Uh... Yes, and I think the passenger probably had to do a little bit of the steering, but it's, um, <laughs> it's, it's a lovely-looking bit of kit. Isn't it? It's um, they were made, I think, in, in Letchworth, and uh, we had a visitor one day came around and said, oh, yeah, you can still see where the factory was because the name's still on the wall, but wow. I've, I've never been out there wow, to wow, try wow. and sort it out. Never heard of them again, one of those thousands of yeah. manufacturers that came and went. But, yeah, it's beautiful, isn't it? I yeah, mean, the, yeah, the sidecar nice. is clearly carriage-built. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and reminiscent of, um, of a horse-drawn. Very much so. Horse-drawn coach, yeah, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it's unbelievable. Yeah, so beautiful.
Yeah, but then stuff. I don't know whether we have we got a decent shot of. Uh, Let's move of, the camera our, around. Here we go. Yeah, with of our TV star. Okay. Um, this one's uh, this one's a broth, not a right. broth superior, but a broth. Okay. And uh, you probably know that broth superior came out of the fact that um, George Broff made motorcycles. His boy wanted to make bikes that were better. That's right. Hence you said, broth yeah, superior. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, this is a 1933 broth, 1150 cc. Mm -hmm. Um, it's attached to a cruiser sidecar, uh, and I'm not sure whether that was a commercial brand or, or a brand that was actually made by somebody specifically to right, do a job. Right, yep. um, the outfit actually had competed in the international six-day trial, but <laughs> why this one is so famous, and hence some of the props with it, yeah. it was three times or four times in Dad's Army, Right. Um, the, the, particularly the movie one. Um, yeah, where, I remember uh, one, yeah where uh, Captain Mannering was um, up against the local platoon from another area. And I remember it well. It was recorded at Thetford in Norfolk. Yeah, yeah. I remember yeah, it well. Exactly right, which yeah. is where I'm going next year for oh, really? a, a For a Dad's run. Army... Uh, yeah, we're staying in the same <laughs> hotel. Really, really. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, so uh, Warden Hodges rode this three or four times, and oh, it was excellent. also um, the star of George and Mildred as yeah, well, which it it predates up. Dad's Army even, with Youth of Joyce and Brian... Does that predate Dad's Army? Other. I think it probably does. But it was his, I've never heard of it. But. His, tr his uh, yeah. So we we've yeah, got well, picture of the cast with yeah, the with it. the bike actually in there. Excellent. Yeah. So, so this uh, is all from the aluminium. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. Not quite as coach built as the other one, is it? But no. No. I mean, it, it is a sort of stuff a chum of mine built um, a trials outfit, and and basically he took a standard sidecar and mullered it around until yeah, it yeah, till yeah, it did yeah. what he needed to do. But that's the way things Great. were. Yeah. Perfect. And uh, the wooden one up at the back, that's um, the colour scheme is reminiscent of the. Coventry Eagle over the back oh, there yeah, because yeah, yeah. when that bike came in that was attached to it. Nice, that looks but, like a, bomb, um, a bombshell as well, doesn't it? Well, it, it's got that sort of bomb look about yeah, it. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> uh, one Excellent. could only assume that as a manufacturer it probably bombed, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I don't know whether, again, whether that's something that somebody made in their shed. We don't have an awful lot of information on that, yeah, I'm afraid. Marvellous, wild. Right, brilliant. So, thank you very much, Jeff. I All think right. that's pretty much it for Hall 1 here. Fantastic look around again. Thank you so much for that. Don't forget, we've only scratched the surface. There are about 170 bikes here. 170, yeah. Plus lots of other exhibits. Yeah, well, there's a lot of memorabilia, and we've got the little barn out the back, which we haven't touched Fabulous. on. Maybe but another video there. You never know. Well, well, excellent, maybe, excellent, maybe. excellent. Yeah. So, uh, don't forget, great excuse to jump on the bike, come for a ride out, maybe when the weather's a bit warmer, <laughs> which, uh, and uh, come along and do have a look. So, thanks very much, Jeff, and thanks to everybody here for having us yep. along again. It's Our been pleasure. fascinating. Yep. And uh, look forward to speaking to you next time. Until then, this has been the Missenden Flyer. Cheerio.